Hello and welcome to a continuation of our discussion on deferred taxes. In this video, we will walk through a complete example of how to account for income taxes of a company that is not in their first year of operations. Watching this video will help prepare you for class. It is important that you view this before class so we can learn more together in class. After watching this video, you should be able to do the accounting for income taxes for a company that is not in their first year of operations. This includes computing taxable income, the cumulative difference amounts, and the ending balance in the deferred tax accounts. You will also be able to record the journal entry for income taxes. Let's walk through an example together. Selly Company has income before tax on the income statement of 300000 the tax rate is 30% for 2012 and 40% for all years after 2012. 2012 is the first year the company has offered warranties. Warranties are estimated and expensed for books in the period of the related sale. A tax deduction is taken when a customer claims the warranty in future years. A lower tax expense for tax means that in 2012 the tax income was higher and the tax payable was higher. This means that in future years, the tax payable will be lower and less tax will be paid in the future, which is an asset. The beginning balance in the deferred tax asset starts with zero since this is the first year for warranties. The company also has a book tax difference related to depreciation. The cumulative difference for all prior years is a 75000 higher deduction for tax than for books. The determination that it was a liability was determined the first year the difference occurred. A greater deduction for tax gives lower taxable income and lower tax paid previously. This means that more tax will be paid in future years. Paying more taxes in the future is a liability. The beginning balance in the deferred tax liability account is 225. The balance in the deferred tax account is always equal to the cumulative difference times the tax rate. In prior years, the future tax rate was the current tax rate of 30%. In 2012, book depreciation was lower than tax by 45000 Set up the calculation with two columns, one for book and one for tax. Start the first line with income before differences. Next, list the differences on separate lines, one for warranty expense, one for depreciation. Put the given dollar amounts on the corresponding lines. The example gave the book and tax amounts for 2012. For depreciation, the amount given was the difference. You can put any amount in the two columns that you want to as long as the difference is greater or negative by 45000 on the tax side. I like to make one column zero and the other the difference amount so the difference equals the given amount. The book income before tax was also given at 300000 Multiply 300000 by 30% to get the tax expense. Income before tax on the tax side is not given, and you cannot compute tax payable without it. You have to start at income before tax of 300000 on the book side and work up to plug 380000 as income before differences. This is the same amount on the tax side since there is no difference. Write the amount in the tax column and work down to compute income before tax. Next, compute the cumulative book tax difference for the warranty expense. This is the first year, so the cumulative difference is the same as the 2012 difference of 58000 For depreciation, the prior year cumulative difference was 75000 and the current year difference is 45000 for a total difference of 120000 The cumulative differences are multiplied by the future tax rate to get the balance in the deferred tax account for the asset and the liability. The deferred tax liability had a beginning balance of 225. It takes recording a credit of 255 to get to the balance of 48,000. It is important to note that the amount recorded in the journal entry is the amount it takes to get to the calculated ending balance. The deferred tax asset account had a beginning balance of zero. It takes recording a debit of 23.2 to get to the balance of 23,200. 
The tax payable is recorded for the amount at the bottom of the tax column. The amount was 93.9. Tax expense will not be equal to the 90,000 at the bottom of the book column because we have a tax rate change. Tax expense is recorded for the amount required to balance the journal entry. The increase in the tax rate caused tax expense to be slightly higher. Let's use the information related to 2013 to record income taxes. The company has the same two book tax differences. The amount reported on the income statement is different than the amount recorded on the tax return. Warranty expense started out as an asset and it will remain an asset until the difference is totally eliminated. Depreciation expense started out as a liability and it will remain a liability until the difference is totally eliminated. Income before tax recorded on the income statement is 170000 Items reported on the income statement are referred to as book. The tax rate has increased to 40%. Set up the calculation with two columns, one for book and one for tax. Start the first line with income before differences. Next, list the differences on separate lines for warranty expense and depreciation expense. Put the given dollar amounts on the corresponding lines. The example gave the book and tax amounts for 2013 for warranty expense. For depreciation, the amount given was the difference, with book being 20000 higher than tax. You can put any amounts in the two columns that you want for depreciation, as long as the difference is a greater negative by 20000 on the book side. I like to make one column zero and the other the difference amount so that the difference equals the amount given. The book income before tax was also given at 170000 Multiply 170 by 30% to get the tax expense. I'm sorry, 40% in the current year to get the tax expense. Income before tax on the tax side is not given and you can't compute tax payable without it. You have to start at income before tax of 170000 on the book side, work up to get 208000 as the income before differences. This is the same amount on the tax side since there is no difference. Write the amount in the tax column and work down to compute income before tax. Multiply by 40% to get the tax payable amount of 60000 Next, compute the cumulative book tax difference for warranty expense. This is the second year, so the cumulative difference will include the first year and the second year. Warranty expense for books is 80000 in 2012 plus 18000 in 2013, or 98000 cumulative reported on the income statement. Warranty deductions for tax were 22,000 in 2012 plus 58,000 in 2013 for a total of 80,000. The cumulative difference for 2013 is 18,000. 98,000 on the income statement less 80,000 on the tax return for both years. For depreciation, the prior year cumulative difference was 120,000 more for tax and the current year difference is 20,000 more for books for a total net cumulative difference of 100,000. Depreciation is still a liability and warranty expense is still an asset. The cumulative difference is multiplied by the future tax rate to get the balance in the deferred tax account. For the deferred tax liability, the difference in the prior year balance and the current year balance is the amount that is recorded in the journal entry. There was room for only one T account on this screen, so the amount recorded for deferred tax asset is the 2012 balance of 23200 less the 2013 balance of 7200 The tax payable is the amount at the bottom of the tax column. Tax expense is the amount at the bottom of the book column because future tax rate did not change. It is important to remember that you do not record the computed account balance to the deferred tax account. You record the difference in the prior year balance and the current year balance. After viewing this video, you should be able to compute taxable income for book and for tax, compute cumulative differences amounts, and compute the ending balances in the deferred tax accounts. 
You will use this information and be able to record the journal entry for income taxes. The next video will walk you through an example of how to account for net operating losses and the valuation allowance. You should watch this video again and complete the self-test and easy test before moving on to the next video. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is very much appreciated.